on the edge of the Felua, close to Arnhem, lies Brombeek. Originally, it was a 19th century country estate, named after the spring and stream that has its source there. King William III bought the estate in 1854, and in 1859 he gave it to the Dutch government for the purpose of converting it into a home for veterans of the colonial army. The monumental building was opened in 1863. Ever since, the buildings and monuments on the estate bear testimony to a rich history. The Netherlands has had a presence in East India ever since the early days of the VOC, or Dutch East India Company. In 1830, the Dutch formed a colonial army. It was hard to find volunteers, however, and in order to make serving in this army more attractive, it was decided to establish a home for veterans who had served in the colonies. Until then, proper care for senior citizens did not exist. For this purpose, King William III gave his own estate to the Dutch government, on the one condition that the estate would never be used for any other purpose. The Dutch state accepted the gift and colonial military invalid's home, Brombe, was founded by royal decree. The reigning monarch is Brombeek's patron. The prominent architect Rose designed a modern building that was to house 200 veterans. It is 110 meters wide and has only a ground and first floor. The communal areas were downstairs and the dormitories were upstairs. Soon after the home opened, it started to receive many gifts. Private individuals, the government, and the royal family donated all kinds of objects. And today, these gifts form the basis of the museum's collection. Bronbeek soon became the symbol of Dutch colonial pride. The museum function of the building was determined by royal decree and it is an important source of knowledge about the history of the Dutch East Indies and the Royal Dutch Indian Army. The museum passes its knowledge on in many ways. One of those is the permanent exhibition The Story of the Netherlands East Indies in six of the former dormitories of the home. Colonial military invalid's home, Brombeek, opened its doors on the 19th of February, 1863, coinciding by no coincidence with King William III's birthday. Each year to this day, the date is celebrated with a group photograph of the current residence. Flowers beneath the king's bust. And a festive get-together. After the Second World War, the number of residents declined to fewer than a hundred. For this reason, in 1960, the Ministry of Defence decided to modernise Blombeek. A number of the dormitories on the upper floor were converted into rooms for one, or two veterans. Princess Margriet reopened the modernized Bronbeek on the home centenary in 1963. In 1970, the criteria for a place in the home changed and the Bronbeek started to welcome veterans from all the armed services. Despite this, the number of veterans living here continued to decline and in 1979, the Ministry of Defence announced that Brombeek would close. The news was greeted with a storm of protest. A delegation from the home travelled to The Hague with a petition signed by more than 12,000 people. In 1983, the Friends of Brombeek Foundation was established. The motion is aangenomen. A ruling by the Council of State in 1984 put a definitive end to the closure plans. Brombeek was to remain open. Welkom, fijn dat u er bent. Fijn dat u hier vandaag op Brombeek bij ons bent voor de open dag voor aspirant bewoners. Several times a year an open day is organized for aspiring residents. 
Today, Brombeek is home to 50 veterans below the officer ranks from all the Dutch services, including the former Royal Dutch Indian Army. Another criterion is that veterans served on active duty in conflict zones or as part of peacekeeping missions. Ja. Ik kan hier best vertoeven. Ja. Als je je eigen vrienden maar uit zoekt, want er zijn 50 verschillende karakters. Hè? Ja. The home is an instrument of the Ministry of Defense's Veterans Policy. Carers and nursing staff work in shifts around the clock at the home. They provide help with residents' personal hygiene and organize activities. Each day, the residents enjoy freshly cooked meals in the dining hall. In order to be able to provide the best possible care, the team works together with other disciplines. The residents live in single rooms and have their own sanitary facilities. Much attention is paid to welfare needs particular to veterans. We think in verbondenheid with all the koningin and fatherland gediend have. Various commemoration ceremonies take place each year. Each year on the 27th of February, for instance, a ceremony is held in remembrance of the many naval sailors who perished during the Battle of the Java Sea at the end of February 1942. All kinds of activities are organized each week, whereby volunteers provide support. One of those activities is the annual trout fishing trip. Graag heet ik u welkom bij de jaarlijkse herdenking van de opheffing van het Koninklijk Nederlands Indisch Leger op 26 juli 1950. Each year a ceremony is held by the Royal Dutch India Army Monument to commemorate all those who served and perished in that army which was formed in 1830. It undertook many missions because the colonial government wanted to gain more control on the empire of islands. When Indonesia became independent towards the end of 1949, the Royal Dutch Indian Army no longer had a purpose. Six months later, on the 26th of July 1950, the army was disbanded. Today's Kumpulam was originally built as a hospital for the residents. In 1992, the building was converted into an Indonesian restaurant. We zouden doen, en ik geloof dat het een fantastische geslaagde dag. It was also extended with a congress hall for events such as Veterans Reunion Days and symposiums organized by the museum. By organizing symposiums, lectures, exhibitions, fun activities and broadly accessible open days, the museum attempts to raise awareness among the general public about the nation's colonial history. Each year, hundreds of students follow the museum's educational programs too. Over the years, a lot of knowledge and experiences have been collected and built up at the museum. The expertise is available to everybody who is interested. On the annual Christen Days and Photo Days, the museum makes expertise available to visitors with questions about weapons and photographs from Dutch India that they bring in. In an underground depot, more than 55,000 objects are kept under ideal circumstances. Brombeek is an important venue for remembrance ceremonies. The Ministry of Defence maintains the monuments on the estate and organises or facilitates the remembrance ceremonies, many of which commemorate events in Southeast Asia during the Second World War. Vandaag, 27 augustus, 
Herdenken we de slachtoffers van de dodenspoorregen. Werkende mannen in de hitte. Ze zuchten. Ze zweten. Ze beleven een tijd die ze nooit zullen vergeten. The Friends of Bronbeek Foundation supports the home and the museum. <laughs> One of the annual events it organizes for the home is a boat trip on the waters of the Netherlands. <laughs> Most of the residents stay at Bronbeek until they die. At funerals, the residents gather in uniform at the commander's house, together with family and staff. Before the hearse leaves, the commander reads out the deceased's life story. Vandaag zullen de urnen van drie voormalige bewoners worden bijgezet. Daarmee zijn ze weer teruggekeerd op Bronbeek. There is no cemetery on the estate, but there is a columbarium for those residents who want their ashes to remain at Bronbeek. The urns are placed in the columbarium only once a year, during a ceremony attended by family and residents. home to Dutch veterans and the place where Dutch colonial heritage is kept alive. A place of national importance. <laughs>